Hi there, I'm Java Jim with First Line Equipment, and I'm hoping you're having a great day today. And in front of us, I'd like to introduce to you the Lelite Giulietta 2 Group Espresso and Cappuccino Machine, 220 volt, basically their commercial machine for coffee shops, cafes, restaurants, offices, and in some cases, your home. We also have the Lelite William, it's a 110 volt, 600 watt motor espresso coffee grinder and the key word is espresso coffee which means it's for espresso and you'll see later how fast this little William which is our bad boy grinder grind we have a Ilsa dual spout uh, steaming pitcher frothing pitcher we have uh, a cup and saucer here and uh, just a little challenge if you know who makes this cup and saucer, comment down below. I'd be interested to see if you know who makes that. As far as I know, it's been discontinued. So you may have to do a little research and I'm not telling you at the end either. We have some espresso cups. We have our large uh, cup warming tray. Uh, typically this machine takes about 45 minutes to an hour to warm up. It's got a 10 liter boiler, which is pretty big for a budget priced two group espresso machine. You have two groups, you have a touch pad here in the front, you could program uh, how much water goes through the coffee grind. Me, I prefer to do it manual. Hit the manual button here, start and stop the water going through. We have our E61 group heads, but there's no manual lever. You have the push button. Why do you want that? Make it easier for others to use. When you make it easier, the beverage can come out better and you're still getting a quality espresso instead of one of those push button super automatic machines that typically water the espresso down or use a high pressurization rate uh, to make the crema. But you have very little lead way in changing the taste and the profile as compared to a traditional machine. Plus, reliability goes way through the roof when you have a traditional machine. It's not to say that the super automatics are bad, uh, it's to say that the quality in the cup is higher uh, on a traditional machine, the reliability is higher, but the convenience comes down a little bit. So that's why we like the machine here with the touchpad, especially in a commercial environment. Um, we have two steam wands, multi-directional uh, or steam valves, multi-directional wands, and we have a hot water valve. Again, all 220 volt for high performance. 220 volt sends more power to the machine. All stainless steel body, polished in the back, polished in the front, satin finish on the side panels here. Drip tray, it's gotta be drained, okay? Uh, key to remember, if you look at our commercial installation uh, requirements, for every foot across on your drip tray drain, you need to drop one inch. Water line uh, includes the stainless steel braided hose. Watch our other video, we talk about BWT for um, softening the water and filtering the water. And then also you have to regulate the pressure between 35 and 40 PSI. Uh, and also you need a backflow preventer. So any water in the machine doesn't go backwards into the water system for health reasons, as you know. And I'm saving the, a little bit, the less, le least, or the best, not the least, the best for last. Actually the tamper, this is not included with the machine. It comes with the plastic tamper. And we also have the uh, Lelite uh, tray but this is their uh, 58.55 heavyweight tamper, sold as an option here at First Line. And then again, the best and the least for last. This is one of our uh, freshly roasted coffee. It's our darkest blend that we roast. I helped formulate this blend uh, to grow hair in my head. And I've been drinking this coffee for about 10 years and you can see how successful I am, okay? So it's called the mid-morning blend. It is roasted extremely dark with an oily surface, and it's mostly for the punch for your cappuccinos and more so for your lattes. Uh, that's why the darker coffee sometimes tastes better when you're uh, mixing it in with uh, froth or steamed milk or micro froth milk. So we're using that today and we are going to get started making espresso and also a latte. So the gauge actually tells you a lot of information before we even get started. One, the top is for the steam, and you basically want to be between 0.8 and 
If you go over 1.5, the safety valve may be opening up, and that means you have lime scale in the boiler, lime scale in the pressure stat, or a clogged pipe from lime scale. So it's really important uh, to make sure that it's in that range. And then the bottom is the, you're right now the water line pressure, which is six bar. Guess what? That's a little too high here at first line on that water line pressure. So a uh, pressure regulator would also be required. And we want to bring this down between 35 and 40 PSI, which is about, uh, you want to be here between basically two and three bar. That's where it should be hovering. So just to go to show you that our water line pressure is too high. Now, what does that mean? Yeah, you can still operate like this, but the, if, if the water line pressure starts getting higher and higher and you don't have a pressure regulator, it can blow open the valves and create a leak in the boiler. So uh, it'll come out through the safety valve or the bleeder valve and you'll have uh, some massive leakage. Now, uh, the other thing you wanna make sure over here is that the group head is piping hot. You can't keep your hands on it. That's another indication that you basically want a nice hot group head. Let's get started. So while the machine's warming up, you wanna make sure the portafilter is piping hot where you can't keep your hands on it. Grind some fresh coffee, roasted recently, and this has been programmed. Now, I just hit the button once for a single, but that's not enough coffee, okay? So you wanna take that out, press twice, and just to let you know, I did calibrate this beforehand, so there aren't any mistakes. And I had a program for 6.1 seconds. And if you look here, almost the level of the rim. Now there is a button on the top that I can add a little bit more, which I really like on the William Grinder. And as you can see, double dose in six seconds is pretty darn fast. Again, the machine comes with a plastic tamper. The problem is, with the conspiracy, you don't have full coverage on the tamp. So I do like the optional Elite Tamper, like to press down. And basically, if you look at my fingers, okay, I'm pressing down, tamping by volume. My fingers are in the rim of the tamper and the basket. And the reason I twist for a little polish is to make sure that it's even on the level of the coffee. If it's leveled down one way, water's all going down that one side, path of least resistance. Okay, so now we'll get this locked in the group head. Now, your cups wanna be nice and toasty and warm. If not, your espresso is gonna come out sour. If you wanna flash heat, use the hot water valve over here to flash heat and then dry the cups. We don't need to do that. Now, this spout here is a little on the wide side. So if you're going, trying to go into a single cup, it's gonna kinda of be a no-no. And then you're gonna wanna get either two shot glasses or two demi-tasse cups. Or if you're gonna pull a shot right into the, a larger paper cup, you can remove the riser. Why do we have the riser? The more the espresso drops, the more the crema breaks. So the closer we can get it higher, the better for the espresso. Okay, just keep that in mind. Just getting back to the hot water valve, you should take out four to eight ounces a day just to flush out the boiler of water because sometimes you may have some siphoning of milk that goes backwards and you wanna basically flush that out. And also, it takes out the lime scale uh, minerals that can build up sometimes at the bottom. So that hot water comes from the steam boiler, from the bottom of the boiler. We're gonna depress uh, the manual button here. Again, these can be programmed, just read the instruction manual. The espresso should start coming out between seven and set, I'm sorry, five and seven seconds. And look at that. This is a heat exchange machine and the crema is coming out beautiful. Again, mid-morning coffee. My favorite coffee to grow hair on my head. Okay, rotary vein pump in the machine. And I'm eyeballing it, I'm not even timing it. Now the gauge went up to 10 bar. Um, sometimes these gauges, they can show one bar more than what's really in the group head. So just to keep you aware of that, uh, sometimes it's a little higher on that gauge. And we have some great looking espresso. And we're gonna take our cup over here and we're gonna steam some milk. I'm gonna froth some milk. And the first thing you wanna do is bleed. Okay, a little condensation that builds up in the pipe. 
And I'm not even going to work this. I'm just going to put that right here. And I'm full op open on the valve. And I'm just sliding the picture. I'm barely working it. And when it gets hot to the touch, close the valve. We got a little shot here of espresso. I admit I am not a latte artist. Okay, and we want, this is a dual spout. Steamy pitcher, and there, voila. We have a nice microfroth, uh, you can say cappuccino or latte. Uh, in this case, I would say it's more of a cappuccino, uh, but just more milk and you would have a latte. So, and here we have a miniature cappuccino or uh, I wouldn't say a macchiato, but pretty close. So uh, that's how fast and easy it is to make your espresso, cappuccino and lattes. Mm -mm, good. Absolutely delicious. As you can see, we made a great. My kids hate this. Great espresso and cappuccino latte, uh, whichever one you prefer to make, uh, but it, we can make great beverages with this equipment and take a look, click on the link below on our website for the William, for the Julieta. There's more pictures of the internals on our website. If you have any questions or comments, ask down below or right on our website in the Q and A tab. Once again, this is Java Jim with first line equipment. Please give me a thumbs up down below. Subscribe to your YouTube channel and have a great day. Coffee first, everything else after.